everybody, this is uh, Jim at sp500chart.com. It's a little bit after noon on May 25th, 2020. It's Memorial Day. If you, um, this is when we remember those who served <clears throat> the United States in the military and gave their lives for that cause. <clears throat> so if anyone in your family has uh, lost their life in the military, this is the day we think about them and we honor such people. Before we get started with this chart, let me remind you the website and the video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's take a look. Well, we came in to this week with what appeared to be a bounce on this uh, support line right here. And remember, that's, that's, that was a pretty speculative support line because it's only there because it's parallel to this line and this line and it lined up with the low back in, in late March. Uh, that, that's really the only reason it was there. Now, we also had uh, a line of resistance here, and we ended up uh, putting this line up sort of tentatively last week as well. So remember, this was maybe support, maybe support, and how did that work out? Well, looks like support to me. And of course, we by the end of the week last week, we did have a, a pretty decent uh, bounce off of that. So, uh, you know, uh, calling, calling for this as being support appeared to be somewhat justified even at the end of last week. I think this week it definitely appears to be justified. Additionally, we were looking at a potential uh, consolidation pattern between this line of resistance and now this line of support. We got up over that this past week, and at one point, only one point, I believe on Wednesday, when we closed around 2970-something, at that point we were technically significant significantly over this line. So what it sort of looks like is that Thursday was a pullback. Friday completed that pullback. And now it looks like we're bouncing off that tested line right there. You might look back on Friday of, uh, excuse me, not Friday, Wednesday. I can't talk. I can't think. That's the problem. I can talk. I just can't think on the 19th. We closed underneath that line, but uh, that was not a technically significant thing. And it just looked to be uh, maybe just a little bit of jitters there as the markets closed on the 19th. If we look at things on this five minute chart, you know, we could maybe put a little line right there and say, well, that was a, a line of resistance that we got over. And we could maybe shoot a line backwards sort of like that, and maybe make the case that this was a rising wedge that we now are in the process of getting over, but somebody could also come along and say, well, let's create a parallel line there. How can you be so sure we're not just in a down channel now? Well, I just don't think we are. <laughs> call it gut level or whatever, I think that we are probably uh, in, in the process rather of, again, having bounced off this line and hitting this line, as we mentioned uh, in another point in the week. I think we go sideways for a bit longer, maybe up and then down, but I don't think we're going to move up uh, to a significant um, new uh, level until we tag either this line or this line right here. And obviously that could happen um, next week. As a matter of fact, we could, we could hit this, this line on Monday. You want to stay above this 
because this is the line you're over and you've already back tested once. So you could see that there's this line and this line, they sort of form this little uh, accelerating area here of likely support. So um, that that's really pretty much the, the week in a nutshell. Um, had that significant gap up on Monday, <clears throat> did not close that gap. No, no big need to close it. Might get closed, might not, probably, I don't know, you know. There's nothing magical about gaps. <clears throat> I just don't think people think there is, but I don't think there is. They usually do get filled, but not because of magic. They usually get filled because, well, that's just, stock charts tend to go up and down, and a lot of times you do end up revisiting a gap. The, the thing that is very noticeable is the fact that you do tend to get gap support when you gap up or gap resistance when you gap down. And we've talked about that lots of times. So I won't, I won't do it again here. But, but basically, you know, it looks like we're in pretty good shape. We'll see with this long weekend. Maybe, you know, people get through this long weekend and they'll, they'll uh, have a little bit more comfort with some of the things that are in the news. And, uh, and then perhaps we can get, get, the, get the ball uh, started rolling in a positive fashion tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see the futures. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just kind of my thoughts for now. On that topic, I just checked the futures, and and as far as you could trust the futures on a on a holiday, um, they're up at this point a, a bit more than a percent. So anyway, th there is your weekly review video of, for last week for the week ending. What was it? The twenty second, twenty third, forty yet May twenty second. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch it. And as always, thanks for your very kind support. Take care.